Over the last 14-ish chapters of One Piece, we have been treated to some of the most hype moments that One Piece has had for years, but we've also had some of the most disappointing moments as well. However, what if I told you that despite what you might think about these anti-hype moments, we can actually prove that Luffy has surpassed Kaido in nearly every way? Oh, did that get your attention? Good, because we have a lot to cover, so keep your theories and uninformed opinions in the ride at all times as we take the roller coaster that is One Piece Chapter 1000 to 113. Hello Internet, Jojo here, and today we're going to go on a deep dive into the latest few chapters of One Piece and learn all about the man who has surpassed Kaido, Monkey D. Luffy. Now, first off, let's set some ground rules. When I say surpass, I mean that, for example, for base Luffy to have surpassed Kaido, he must be stronger in base than Kaido is in his base. For Gear 2nd to have surpassed Kaido, it must be stronger than hybrid Kaido. We are not talking about base versus awakening or gear second versus base, as that doesn't really apply here, and that's kind of missing the point. So with those rules laid out, let's get into this. To start off, we first need to categorize the ways that Luffy could surpass Kaido. These three categories are speed, physical strength, and hockey. Now, we know that at the point of their first fight, Kaido was superior in every one of these categories as he was fast enough to land a solid hit on Luffy's super fast bound man form, strong enough to knock him out with that attack, and was completely unbothered by Luffy's concourse hockey. So now that we know that pre Udon Luffy was not even on the radar when compared to Kaido during the first encounter, we can go on and talk about how Luffy has grown to surpass him since then. We will first talk about speed. In chapter 1000, we get two clear and indisputable panels that show base Luffy besting Kaido in terms of speed. The first is when he dodges Kaido's attack and then jumps up. The second is when he uses Gear 3rd to punch down. Now, we know this is base Luffy because of the lack of steam that is iconic for Gear 2nd. In Chapter 101, we get further confirmation of the speed when he dodges the same attack that was too fast for Bound Man while he's in his base. Now, Luffy states that he was able to dodge this because he was seeing the future, but it looks like the attack was already in motion before he began to move, meaning that base Luffy is faster than Bound Man, and due to dodging the attack, faster than base Kaido as well. Then, after a few chapters spin away from Luffy, we come to 109, where base Luffy competes with a hybrid Kaido. While Kaido does dodge Luffy's Red Hawk, Luffy is fast enough to casually talk to Kaido, while hybrid Kaido is not fast enough to respond. You might think that he just chose not to respond to Luffy, but Kaido has been consistently talking to the fight at every other point. After that, Hybrid Kaido makes a full swing point blank at Luffy, but Luffy is fast enough not only to activate his hockey, but also to move his arms and block it. Immediately following that attack, Kaido charges at him and fires a laser, but Luffy dodges it. It is only after this huge combination of attacks that Hybrid Kaido finally manages to land an attack on base Luffy. Also, I wanted to mention it real quick, but Kaido is very pacifista like, taking nearly identical attacks from Luffy both firing lasers out of the mouth, and both being enemies directly after a major power-up. This might cause me to say that, like a pacifista, Kaido is built to be surpassed. Next up comes from after he wakes up from Kaido's attack in 1010. Hybrid Kaido attacks him only for Luffy to jump up, turn around, and clash with him. We will talk about this clash in a few minutes. After that first clash, he charges at Kaido, landing a hit on his stomach and an uppercut to his chin. Luffy did all this in base form without Hybrid Kaido dodging, much less landing a single hit. Lastly, in Chapter 1011, base Luffy and Hybrid Kaido charge at each other and clash one last time. Looking at all this side by side, and it's super obvious that base Luffy is way faster than base Kaido, and even faster than Hybrid Kaido, thus proving that Luffy has surpassed Kaido in speed. However, Kaido still has one trick up his sleeve, but that will have to wait. Up next is how Luffy has surpassed him, or more accurately, how he was equal with him in Conqueror's Hockey. This one's pretty obvious, as Kaido and Luffy have clashed on equal terms at least twice, and assuming that Kaido uses his Conqueror's Hockey on his body like armor, Luffy has overpowered his Conquerors twice as well with those direct hits. It's also worth mentioning that we have no evidence to support the idea that Kaido has advanced Armament Hockey, and 
Evidence actually disproving the idea that he has future sight, as Kaido is constantly being surprised by opponents. This outright proves that Luffy's armament hockey and observation hockey are both vastly superior to Kaido's, and that Luffy's conquerors should be equal to his as well. The only major difference between Kaido and Luffy is that Kaido seems to know how to fight with hockey and not completely exhaust himself. Lastly, we come to power. Luffy's training in Udon has made his current base far stronger than his pre-Udon Bound Man, as he has proven time and time again that he can compete in base with hybrid Kaido, even dodging some of the same attacks that one-shot him before. Post-Udon Bound Man is vastly superior to Kaido's Dragon Form and base, as he threw both around like a rag doll. The only attack that Kaido managed to land on Luffy in this form was his Blast Breath, and Luffy actually tanked that attack way better than Kaido did when Raizo turned it back on him. So, all this means that Luffy has surpassed and should be able to beat Kaido. But if this is the case, then how did this happen? Now, say what you want about how strong you think Kaido is or how weak you think Luffy is, I don't believe that Oda arbitrarily put these scenes showing Bay's Luffy taking on both hybrid Kaido and base Kaido along with giving him a new user conquerors only to have Luffy getting beaten off screen without something else going on other than Kaido being very strong. Luckily, as of chapter 1014, we know that this is the case. While it's not explicitly stated, it is implied that this loss stems from Luffy's poor management and lack of experience using Conqueror's Hockey. Of course, this makes sense as he only just realized he could clad his fist with Conqueror's Hockey like 10 minutes ago. To be more specific, I think the reason that this happened is twofold on top of his lack of experience with Conquerors. Kaido's Devil Fruit Awakening and the fact that I don't think Luffy knows how to apply Conquerors to his more powerful forms at this current point in time. You see, I have an idea. Everyone says that Kaido is unbeatable in a one-on-one -on -one fight, but we have been repeatedly unimpressed by this. As a dragon, he got downed by pre-Udon Luffy. Big Mom matched his base form despite referring to him as a thing in the previous arc. Luffy downed him in base and matched his hybrid form while in base as well. Sure, he is definitely strong, but not what he has been hyped up to be. Then I had a thought. What if the legendary hyped up Kaido that everyone talks about and thinks of when they place their bets is actually referring to his awakening? This is why he was able to win against Luffy despite the fact that Oda very explicitly showed us that Luffy was able to match in base Kaido's hybrid form as we know that awakenings are far stronger than a typical zone hybrid. This could be why we didn't see them fight before Luffy got thrown off Onigashima. Oda doesn't want to show Kaido's awakening yet. So, given all this, what does Luffy need in order to beat Kaido? As it stands now, I see that there are three possibilities. First, that Luffy needs to awaken advanced Conqueror's Hockey. It is possible that his newest application of Conquerors is the advanced form of it, but it's not called that, and it is described as just a different application of regular Conquerors, very similar to how Orisons is a different application of Observation Hockey, not Advanced Observation. There is really no limit to what Advanced Conquerors could be. It could be Unlimited Hockey, or it could be what Luffy has unlocked already. Second is that he needs to be able to apply Conquerors to his more powerful forms. While it's not stated or shown anywhere, from what we see, Luffy hasn't used his new Conquerors in Gear 2nd or Bound Man. This could be because he chose not to, because he can't do it yet, or maybe he did apply it to his more powerful forms just off screen. However, we have yet to actually see him do it. But if I'm correct and Luffy can't currently apply Conquerors to a more powerful form, then the moment he actually learns to, he could actually end up being one of the strongest characters in the entire series as Bound Man was already throwing around Kaido, and Conquerors would just amp that up. However, if I was going to give Luffy any one power-up, I would give him his awakening, as blowing air into his body is just way too taxing on him physically and mentally. Hopefully with his awakening, he wouldn't have to blow air into his body anymore, as he could just use his awakening to make himself bigger. This would actually solve nearly every issue he has had since in his lobby. And that might be the key for him to start being able to apply Conquerors to Bound Man. I also wanted to bring up the fact that 
if Luffy manages to beat Kaido now, it would be more impressive than if they were both at their best and Luffy beat him. You see, Luffy has taken more damage in comparison to Kaido. Think of it like this. Say that at the start of the fight, Luffy had 100 hit points, and Kaido had 1000. This is a difference of 10 times. Now, at this point in the fight, with Luffy having been knocked out multiple times, he should have, at most, about 25 HP left. However, Kaido is taking a lot of damage too, leaving him at a minimum, an absolute minimum, of 250 HP. That is a difference of 10 times, and the gap is likely far greater, as he doesn't seem to be struggling too much after his fight. This is also not mentioning that Kaido has an insane healing ability, able to scar over Odin's cut in about 30 seconds without medical treatment. For the record, an abdominal surgery wound will fully heal in 3 months, and that is with medical treatment. This means that Kaido can heal tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands times faster than a normal human. So every second that passes, Kaido heals a massive amount of inflicted damage. Between now and when Luffy fights Kaido again, there's a very good chance that he will be fully healed and back at full power. With that, you now know exactly how Luffy has matched or even already surpassed Kaido, and why Luffy beating Kaido is more impressive now than if he beat him at his strongest. Sorry if this seemed kind of rambly, but this is something I wanted to get off my chest, as I have spent weeks seeing people misunderstand what is going on. All that said, of course, let's see how this ages over the next 20 chapters or so. So, thanks for watching, see you next time, remember to stay spectacular, Jojo, out. Drink up me, Harley Jojo.